What's up guys and welcome back to another video with JTEC News here. Today I'm going to walk you through everything Apple released at WWDC 2019 today, June 3rd. Uh, I saw it at 1 p.m. Eastern Time because I'm on the East Coast and I want to walk you through everything they announced and uh, let's jump right into it. So here they announced iOS 13, and honestly, it's kind of a, not a disappointment, but not the biggest change I hoped for, like they did with iOS 7, where they changed up every single app icon, every single feel of the design. This update was more of a, uh, you know, simple, not simple, but they had a few good updates. Uh, one thing that we've all been waiting for for the past few years is dark mode. Uh, which actually looks pretty nice. You're actually using a dark black, deep black, that's gonna take advantage uh, on the iPhone 10 and up, except for the iPhone 10R. That's still using a liquid retina, AKA standard LCD panel. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump in on, on what else they released. Here we can see iPad OS, which I guess is, since this is the first generation, first version of iPad OS, it still looks a lot like iOS. Uh, but you can see a slightly redesigned, uh, slightly redesigned home screen and a few other Pro features that will actually change the way you use your iPad Pro and iPad moving forward. Uh, I've never been a big fan of watchOS, I mean, or of the watch itself, so uh, slight watch face updates, and uh, that's about it. Well, and they brought the App Store to the to the Apple Watch. So if you're an Apple Watch user, rejoice that you can download uh, apps directly from the App App Watch Store uh, instead of having reliance on the iOS iPhone. Uh, for macOS, they released macOS Catalina, which again just brings some of the iOS apps into Mac OS. And also, if you're a developer, uh, you can now build uh, one code base which runs throughout the whole Apple uh, garden. As you can say, you know, iOS, iPad OS now, and Mac OS, all one code base, which is pretty awesome. And finally, for the pro users, musicians, filmmakers, pro users, developers, um, they finally released their Mac Pro, which is a monster machine with a monster price tag. And uh, so another thing they released is the long-awaited Pro Display, which is called the Pro Display XDR. Uh, XDR just means extreme dynamic range. Uh, they said they pushed it so far that instead of being HDR, which is high dynamic range, it's just extreme. This is a crazy display. And again, everything that they released, hardware, hardware based, is extreme in terms of specs and price. You know, to give you a, a quick little estimate of how much it will cost you to have a basic setup from from Apple. A standard base Mac Pro starts at $599. So it's at $6K, $6,000 plus tax. Then the Pro Display XDR starts at $499. So basically $5,000 plus tax. And if you want to mount that display to a to the dock, so we all thought that the dock is part of the display, but it's not. That's an, an additional $1,000, so 9999 US. So in total, $6,000 Mac Pro, $5,000 Pro Display XDR. That's already $11,000 plus the stand that you need. That's it. This is a twelve thousand dollars setup. If you want the base configurations for both the Pro Display XDR and the Mac Pro, again, this is aimed for professionals, pro in mind. So don't think the average, your grandma, or yourself that just does you know basic web browsing or for college students. This is not the computer or setup for you or environment for you. This is for people that do pro work. I need to push their limits. Uh, so again, this price tag is reasonable, I'm assuming, to those sorts of people. 
that make X amount of money per year. Um, but for the average Joe, I don't think this machine is for you. Just not because it's a bad machine, but because it's way too powerful for, for what you're ever gonna use in your lifetime. Uh, so with all that out of the way, I know it's a lot, I'll make separate videos, but let's jump right into iOS 13. So with iOS 13, there's so many new features, but again, it's not a, it's not different. Uh, it's not different with, uh, with the design. It's not different with how things look. There's no, there's a whole bunch of rumor, multitasker uh, interface that hasn't changed. And uh, here we can see a new features available within iOS 13. So obviously the big feature that they've been teasing for a while with the WWDC 19 uh, wallpapers and uh, the the extra things with promotion and marketing things that we're doing outside of buildings and stuff. It all hints into a dark mode, and it's, it's and it's actually here. I'm so happy it's finally here. Dark mode on iOS is here. Uh, it's gonna look so nice. But again, I feel like they they they. It was kind of funny on the keynote actually. And they're like, oh, this is a beautiful. It's the same apps, just black, and they're making it seem like it's a whole different world or something. But it's just the same thing, just black. <laughs> it does look sleek. It does look nice. I am gonna use it, so I'm glad it's here. But it, they were taunting like it was. The world's ending and like it's the best, best thing that's happened to iOS. Uh, Photos has a pretty cool redesigned app. Photos is completely redesigned, looks really nice. Uh, they're separating screen recordings from your photos page. So instead of seeing duplicates and screen recordings and screenshots, all that's been separated out. So if you want to look at your photos, you're going to look at a beautiful collection of your photos instead of seeing, like I said, screenshots, duplicates, and screen recordings that aren't really a part of what you're looking for. Uh, you also see stuff like auto playing live photos and videos, uh, smart photo previews, removes, uh, like I said, in the feature of here, it removes familiar shots and clutter. So you duplicate photo screenshots, whiteboard photos, documents, and receipts are identified and hidden. So you only see your best shots. Uh, there's also a new mode for on this day, birthday mode, uh, which basically focuses on, for example, you have a contact on your contact list and you have their birthday on there and they recognize that face. They, they set up a whole new, almost like a photo book, photo album, specifically designed for that person or, or for yourself uh, with that event. It's actually really nice. It's gonna be, I think, pretty valuable. It's gonna add a lot of value to iPhone users that use that. Uh, a whole bunch of photo updates. Uh, honestly, small things that you probably won't use on a day-to-day -day basis, but they're there and they'll definitely make your life a lot easier if you do jump into those things. Uh, so all those changes are welcome. Uh, here for the camera app, again, we still can't change. Um, with what I saw on the keynote, we still can't change uh, you know, frame rates uh, right within the app. So again, nothing, nothing too uh, dramatic for the camera. And Apple, you know, people talk a lot about Apple, but Apple still respects your privacy and they do everything they can to protect your privacy. And I give them a lot of props for that because there's a lot of companies that use your data to make money, but Apple's still the only company that I know of uh, that pushes privacy and security and I really respect it. And that's the, that's, that's the reason why all my products are at iPhone, iPhone, Apple products, because honestly, nothing, nothing beats privacy. Uh, and I know a lot of people don't really care about that type of stuff, but I do, and tons of other people do, so just letting you guys know about that. Uh, now, you can give apps, which is, I love this feature a lot, you can give apps permission to use a location for that particular instance of when you use that application. So instead of giving it access for as long as you have the app, you give it, in, you give it access for this instance. Hey, I'm using this app now, so you can use it now. Once I close the app, don't give it access to my location anymore. Uh, and a whole bunch of other great stuff that's coming in. Another great feature for privacy is now Apple is giving you the opportunity to instead of using Facebook and Google to sign into third-party apps, like uh, a whole bunch of apps on the web, you know, when you sign in using third-party apps, you're, you're using uh, Facebook's information on yourself and Facebook transferred all that information to that application or website you're trying to access. So that's that's your birthday, you know, pictures, first name, last name, phone number, address. Facebook, if Facebook has all that information and or and or Google that you're using to sign in, they're transferring 
most of the time, all that information to that website. And a whole bunch of other stuff that you probably don't want or you probably didn't even know. So to respect your privacy, Apple's giving you the option now to sign in with Apple, <laughs> which basically limits the information Apple gives to this third-party app that, you, that you're wanting to sign in with or create an account with. And one of the amazing things that they've done is to, instead of giving yourself your email to that app, they create a special email that hides your email. So I'll read it right here from here. Hi, the feature is called Hide My Email. I'm not sure if you want to share your email address with a particular app. You're, you are in control. You can choose to share or hide your email address. You can even choose to have Apple create a unique email address for you that forwards it to your real address. So literally, Apple's giving you a fake email to use with a third party application for you to create an account and communicate. Uh, and if you don't want to continue receiving emails from that particular app, you can block that email because Apple's creating specific emails to every single app that's on the App Store. It's, in my head, it's, it's literally amazing. And this is going to work everywhere. Uh, so I I'm, I'm, can't wait to start using that. It's going to be a lot easier for me and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot easier for you. Uh, for home, I use, I have a few home enabled uh, Apple Kit, Home Kit. Uh, stuff in my house uh, so one of the main things they talk about home is uh, home kit enabled routers uh, so again this is just more security that apple's adding to your home uh, maps you know maps has been pretty eh, you know for the past few years but it seems like they're, they're doing a lot better stuff now uh, they're gonna add uh, more data features and let me see if i can actually look up uh let me see if i can actually look up those things here um, because honestly, it's, 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 it's actually a really, a really great, um, iOS 13 maps. It's actually a really great update that they've done. They've created really smooth, as you can see in this animation, you have really smooth animations that isn't direct competition with Google Maps and Google Street View, so hopefully, uh, hopefully everything goes well with that. And I honestly use Google Maps for my GPS needs. Hopefully, they can uh, win me over with this new improved uh, map stuff. So I'll, I'll keep you guys updated with my experience with that. Siri has gotten uh, a big update again, minor, but it's still noticeable that, that you're going to get value on a day to day basis. Basically, Siri sounds more human. And so that's everything Apple talked about today at WWDC. Of course, this is, a, this is a week long event, but this is the main thing that us techies and everyone like you guys that are watching wants to know. I can't wait to get my hands on iOS 13 and give you guys a hands on experience of how I feel on beta one. And I'm assuming there's gonna be lots of bugs and stuff because it's beta one, but I'm so excited to show you guys more content, give you guys more about all this all new Apple stuff that's coming out. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see a review of the new monitor and the new Mac Pro and uh, subscribe to my channel and like to keep our stuff moving forward. Can't wait to see you guys see you again. See you.